together for the choir if you don't mind. Man. And now let's give Jesus a great big hand clap everybody. Yes Lord. 
And before you take your seat, tell that person next to you, neighbor, if you see me praising God tonight, go on and talk to him. It's all right. Y'all going to talk anyway in church. Folks talk anyway in church. Go on and tell them, neighbor, it's all right to praise the Lord. If you get a little happy tonight, tell them it's all right. If you get a little loud, tell them it's all right. If you feel like running, tell them it's all right. We're in the house of God. That's what we come to do tonight. It's all right to give God praise in his house. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated on tonight. Amen. Enjoy the good singing we heard. Amen. Tonight, praise God from these songsters, from these singers on this evening. Praise God. Amen. Enjoy the everything tonight. It's just good to be here. Amen. Good to be in God's service. One more time. And I say this often when I think about where I could be and look at where I am, it makes me want to give God praise. And I want you to take five, ten seconds, look back over your life and think about where you could be and then look at where you are. That ought to make you want to do something tonight. See, the, 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 the conductor, the reverend, the preacher should have to say praise the Lord. When you look back over your life and see where God brought you from, that automatically ought to want you to say, thank you, Jesus. Because, man, some of us could have been in some bad conditions and some bad shape in life. But because of the goodness of God, we're in the house of God, got a mind to praise him. And so we are so blessed tonight, and we thank God for his goodness. Appreciate this opportunity to be back in the house of worship. Amen. Praise God to be here in March. We want to honor God tonight and the man of God. Amen. Praise God. The shepherd of his house, Bishop Larry B. Kill Sr. And of course, his lovely wife. Amen. Evangelist Margaret Kill. Praise God. Appreciate my first lady being with me tonight. Evangelist Cannon enjoyed her all day today. Amen. Praise God. We don't get a chance to travel much together. We appreciate her having her with us on this trip. And to these men of God, amen, these pastors, Pastor McKee and his first lady, amen, Sister Tara McKee. Amen. Praise God. Pastor Turner, Sister Claudia Turner tonight. And all of the evangelists and saints of God, it's just good to be in your midst here again on tonight. Having a wonderful time in the Lord. If you, you know, if you like church, you know, you because you know, I'm starting to wonder today if uh, we're still in a time when church folks like church. But can I see a show of hand today if you still like church? Man, I, I don't know how folk live without it, man. Man, this is my life. And so I'm good, good, glad to be here on tonight. And I'm just going to take my time and talk. Is that all right? Can I just take my time and talk tonight? Amen. Praise God. Y'all kind of quiet a little bit tonight. Kind of laid back in reserve. And maybe that's where it ought to be tonight. Maybe that's where it should be tonight, amen, as we get into the word of the Lord. But listen, if there was a time to hear what the Lord is saying, that time is now. Because God is still speaking. Mm, God is still speaking. Amen. And we have to make sure we have a listening ear, amen, and tune in to what the Lord is saying to us in these last and evil days. Luke's gospel, Luke's gospel where we're going for our text scriptures, familiar scriptures, amen, to many of us because I find out if you're going to preach the gospel, uh, you're going to come back to the same scriptures every so often because there ain't nothing new under the heaven. Uh-huh. If I preach what Paul preached, I'm going to preach the same thing. If I preach the gospel and Paul preached the gospel, I'm going to preach the same thing he preached. Amen. Folk now messing up trying to come out with something new. Y'all ain't heard that night. Get a revelation that nobody else had. Boy, you wind off in left field, right field, center field, and you be all at the ballpark. Ain't nothing new. No new revelation. No, no, no new interpretation of the scripture. Just tell it like it is, and God will do the rest. Is that right? Luke chapter 15. Let's do some reading. Start at verse number 11. Old familiar scriptures. Luke 15 and 11. Yes. And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Read the book. 
And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Uh huh. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Read the book. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. Yes. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Read it. And when he came to himself. And when he came to himself. He said. Uh-huh. How many hired servants of my How father, many hired servants of my father's. Have bread enough. Have bread enough. And to spare. And to spare. And I perish with and hunger. And I perish with hunger. Uh-huh. I will arise. I will arise. And go to my father. Mm-hmm. And I will say unto him. Father. Father. I have sinned against heaven. And before thee. Uh-huh. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. We'll stop there. Thank God for his word on tonight. Will you clap your hands for the reading of the word of the Lord here on tonight? It is important to understand and recognize that Jesus uh, spoke this parable, praise God, because he intended for this parable amen, to be recorded, amen, prayer in the annals of his book throughout, amen, the eons of time. Because that was an important message that Jesus was trying to get over to all of mankind, prayer as he taught this parable. And we know a parable is simply a, 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 a earthly story that has a spiritual message. And we know, amen, praise God, that when Jesus came, he came to give us a message from God that will benefit us, pray God, not only now, but benefit us throughout eternity. Mm -hmm. And so he spoke this parable of what we call the prodigal son, or the wayward son, or the wasteful son. And there's a message in here that Jesus want us to get. Well, there's many messages in this parable that he want us to get tonight. Amen? Praise God. He, he, when Jesus, amen, spoke in parable, he spoke to inform us. Amen. To make us a little bit more intelligent. And also he spoke to encourage us. And he also spoke to warn us. He had many reasons. Amen. Pray God for teaching. Amen. The gospel of Jesus. Uh, uh, of God. But this story here of the prodigal son. Listen here tonight. Uh, is reminiscent to many people's lives today. There are many prodigals in the world today. Sons. Daughters. In the world today. People in the world today, amen? And I, 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 as I begin to uh, 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 think about this, amen, praise God, begin to reminisce on this uh, 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 story here, amen, praise God, two things stuck out into my mind. First of all, down in the, in, the, in the story here, after he had gone through his dilemmas and had experienced, amen, some of the things he experienced, the Bible said he came to himself. Hmm. Was tell me, amen, pray God, uh, prior to all of this going on in this life, he wasn't quite at himself. Uh, he wasn't quite thinking like he should be thinking. Uh huh. So uh, tonight, that is the crux of my message. Help me announce my thought and tell somebody, neighbor, he came to himself. Mm. And if I had a subtopic, it would be snap out of it. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Hey, Y'all gonna help me tonight? Can I just take my time? Uh-huh. Look at somebody and say, snap out of it. Well, well, help, help me a little further. Pop your finger and say, snap. Uh, he came to himself. And again, amen, praise God. The thing that he did, uh, that he went through, the thing that he experienced, the choices that he made, Amen, pray God. It's not only, amen, just unique to this prodigal son that we read about. Amen, there's a lot of folk even today, praise God, that's like this prodigal son. Amen, this young man was in the position that he's in here because, amen, he made some bad decisions and made some bad choices. And these bad decisions and bad choices, amen, led to some hardships in this man's life. You know, I love God because God didn't make man, amen, a free moral agent, which simply means God gave us the privilege to make choices. God don't force anything on anybody. God don't make 
nobody to do anything. Uh -huh. He said, I set before you life and death. I set before you good and evil, but now it's up to you to make the choice. But the thing about having the power of choice is responsibility comes along with it. And all of us have to bear, amen, the consequences of the choices and decisions that we make. I told him at home, amen, a few uh, weeks ago, I preached the message, it's on you. Uh -huh. See, see, see when, when the time that when folk want to uh, uh, play the blame game, you know, they make bad choices, decisions, mess themselves up, and they want to blame somebody else, but tell somebody it's on you. When you make a bad decision, that's on you. You can't blame nobody but yourself. And so here this young man here, Amen Prager, in this, he found himself in a precarious situation because of the choice and the decision that he made in his life. Now this young man, Prager, if you let me just put it in modern day terms, this young man was sitting pretty. He was in a home, a fine home, you know, had, had a loving father, amen, had a brother as well, the Bible tells us. Now, I don't know about mamas and all like that because the scriptures don't say, but he had a mama somewhere because he had to be born, and certainly he wasn't born of his father. Like a lot of, oh, I ain't going to get in there because they're going to get ugly real quick. Like a lot of men try, trying to have babies, oh, God, what's wrong with them? But anyway, there he, there he was, that sitting pretty, and, 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 had, and had clothes to wear, the best of clothes to wear, the best of food to eat. In fact, he was in a place where even the servants had bread to spare. Even the hired help had plenty of food on hand and had plenty of leftovers. Uh-huh, praise God, amen. And, and so he was a well-off young man, praise God, doing real good. But you know, amen, sometimes you don't understand how good you are, amen, because sometimes we think the grass on the other side of the fence is a little bit greener than the side that we own. And so no doubt, amen, Prager, like other folk, he's trying to figure out, I wonder what the other side of this world looks like. I wonder what it looks like on the other side. You know, I, I'm doing all right, you know, daddy, you know, he's a good daddy, you know, but even though he kind of got a few rules here and there that I don't kind of, you know, like and all like that, but he's a good daddy. He's not an abusive father. He don't beat me. He ain't got me on the streets, you know, amen, Prager, stealing and doing wrong. But, you know, I, I think I kind of want to get out on my own and find out, amen, what makes the world go round. Uh, I want to find out for myself, you know, uh, what's happening here and what's going on here. So this young man made a choice and came to a decision that he was going to go to his father and say, Father, uh, uh, I want you to give me the portion that's coming to me. Uh, in other words, you know, they had an inheritance set up back there that when the parent died, amen, then the inheritance passed on to the children. And, and But he, he couldn't wait till daddy died. He wanted his stuff right now because I'm ready to check out of here and find out, amen, pick up what makes this world tick. Are uh, y'all hear me now? This young man, pick up, didn't understand how good he had it. I said, he didn't understand how good he had it. He was setting pretty. And, and, this, and this is the way, amen, pray God, the enemy is, the devil is. And like, you know, you, of course, you still know the devil is our enemy, don't you? Uh, that, that ain't changed since the beginning of time. You know, uh, he tried to make us feel like now he's our friend. But the devil ain't your friend here, man. The devil is still our enemy. He'll be friendly just to, just to destroy you. He'll be friendly just to control you and, and, and eventually kill you. But the devil is not your friend. Uh-huh. And so, and so he was, amen, Prager. The enemy came to this young man talking to him, amen, Prager, knowing, amen, he was set up good. And the enemy blinded this young man to what we call the pleasures of life. Mm, the pleasures of life. And I can preach a message on the pleasures of life because, amen, what folks say is pleasure really is not pleasure. It's slow death. And it's torture. See, drinking ain't pleasure, baby. It's slow death. Taking drugs ain't pleasure, but that's slow death. Running the streets and all that, that ain't play, that's slow death. That'll kill you and catch up with you as sure as you living. But, 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 but he wanted to get out there, pray God, and find out, and, and, he, and, and he was blinded to these things. Uh-huh, because I say again tonight, beloved, I mean, things always look better on the other side and look like the next person always got it better than you. And sometimes the person you're looking at thinking God, you, they got it better than you, they going through some stuff that'll choke you to death. That's why I tell God, God, give me my trials. Ah, you know, I ain't going to complain about my trials because some folk got some trials. Uh, you know, I, ooh, 
Ooh, Lord, please, please don't put that on me. You know, some folk got some going through some stuff, and there's some folk out there in the world going through some stuff. Amen. Pray that they'll ever blow your mind. Uh, so he thought, amen, pray that other folk had it better than him. And that's always the case. I don't care how God blesses us and how good we got it going. How good, We always think somebody else got it better. But will you help me tonight and tell somebody, neighbor, you got it good. Uh oh. You got it good. If you're alive, walking and talking and know your name, you got it good. You got things going your way. Because life don't consist in the abundance of things that we possess. You ain't got to have a long car to be doing good. Uh oh, and I'm not preaching the poverty gospel either. But 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 you ain't got to have a long car, amen, to be doing good. If you got your life, health, and strength, you doing all right. But here he was now, amen. He was lured. The devil had blinded him, amen, with these so-called things and pleasures of life. And he decided, I want to go out here and try these things. Are oh, you hearing me now? Amen. Praise God. And, and, and you know, amen, not only, not only him, but the word of God tells us, amen, that the devil had blinded the minds of people. Notice he didn't say he blinded their eyes. He said blinded the minds of people, which tell me, amen, play the enemy now, amen, controlling how folks think. He won't let people see, amen, pray exactly how things are, but the devil not putting a curb and a crook on things. I, you know, I, and I hate to put it this way, but look like the world now, look like everybody on dope. Look like everybody smoking grass or something. Because folk not doing some crazy things, they ain't thinking straight. And you want to say, why in the world are they doing something like that? You know, but there's something wrong out there. But, but when you come back to the spiritual part, it's the enemy that have blinded the minds of people. And when your mind is blinded, prayer, you can't tell, amen, prayer, right from wrong. You can't tell up from down. Amen, when, you, when you're spiritually blinded, when your mind is blinded, you got a dullness of understanding and a lack of spiritual insight. Which simply tell me you don't know what's going on. When your mind blinded, you see one thing as one thing, but really it's something else. And that's what that's the kind of world we're living in now. Are hey, you following now? Blinded to the things of God. I mean, blinded to the goodness of God. Because I believe with my heart, if everybody could see how good God is and can see the good things God got in store for their life, they'll be running the church. Y'all got to help me. They'll be running to God, amen. They'll be running to God like them bulls running in Spain. You know how they had to run under the bulls in Spain? They'll be running over folk trying to get to God if they really understood how good God is and all the good things God has for their life. If they understood the goodness of God, they would empty out the clubs. If they understood, amen, the high that God could give them, they'll quit drinking Jack Daniels and old crow and white lightning. They'll come and get some of this new wine God got. It, but, but they just don't see that. They just don't understand that. They spirit Spiritually blind. Uh, what I'm trying to get to the point is they are not at themselves. Oh God. And, and you know, we want to pride ourselves now, especially in our country, as how in telling how smart we are. And and you know, you know, I, I, we got universities and places of higher learning, you know, and, and we're getting all these degrees and all these certifications, which ain't nothing wrong with that. I, I went to college. Ain't nothing wrong with all those king things like that. But listen, Pega, just having a master's or PhD and all that stuff don't make you wise. Mm -hmm. It don't mean you're wise. If I'm an out, because sometimes we lack that common sense. We lack that common insight. There's a young man testified himself, said he went to school and got master's and PhD and didn't know how to use a dustpan. When he was trying to pick up some dust with a dustpan, he had it upside down, turn over, and he got the holler, this dust won't, this trash won't stay up on this thing. And somebody said, turn it over, boy. He had it upside down every time he sweep it up on there to run back out on the floor. He had all them master and PAD, but didn't, but didn't have the common touch. Amen. Even pick a pickup trash with a dustpan. Uh, and, and so, and so, and what I'm saying tonight? Oh, uh, we, we, when a time now when folk just don't understand what's going on, now they blind to the things of God. I want to put it on record again tonight that God is a good God. I said God is a good God and there is nothing wrong with serving God. There is no shame in God's game. Listen, it's an honor to be a part of God. It's an honor to be a child of God. 
It's an honor to know who Jesus is. Y'all got to help me tonight. Amen. Ain't nothing, amen, to be ashamed about. Amen. To say you're a Christian, you've been born again, or you're saved, or you're sanctified, whatever you want to put. It. Ain't no harm in that today. Because that, that, that carries some clout, that carries some weight. Because that's a distinguished honor to be connected with Jesus Christ. Because when you got God in your life, Prager, you and you 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 on, you living how on the hall, and Prager, you, you I mean you living on First Street. When God is in your life, and Prager, you in the penthouse, you know what I mean. You living the life of the so-called rich and famous. When God is in your life, but when you're in sin, you in the hood. Amen. Down there with the wretches and the roses. I get to that a little bit now. Amen. Prager, but people's minds are blinded now. Amen. Prager, to the goodness of God. This is why this is why God have commissioned. Amen. Men and women to preach the gospel. Because the gospel is an eye opener. The gospel come to open your eyes. To take the blindness off us so we can see, amen, the good thing that God got in store for our lives. And as I was saying last night, it's time for us now to hurry up. Amen. Open our eyes and find out what's going on here. Because time is running out and the devil working overtime to destroy folk. Amen. We got to open our eyes and open our eyes quickly. We got to come to ourselves in a hurry now because we don't have much time. When you can't see what the enemy, amen, is doing in your life, amen, or see them traps that he got laying for you, you'll fall into those traps and you won't even know that you're in there. And that's what done happened in our world. Now, the devil done laid out traps now because, amen, folk were spiritually blind and couldn't see it. They done fought, fell into the devil's trap and don't even realize some of them that they're even in there. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, we, we surviving day by day. Amen, folk is getting along day by day now simply because of the grace of God. Some of us should have been dead. That's why I said when I first started, amen, look at where y'all. By right, some of us should have been dead and gone a long time ago. Some of us should have been in the, be in the penitentiary. Amen. Doing hard time. Some of us should be in the hospital. Lost our mind, cotton picking mind. And some of us, you see, some of us ought to be in the graveyard. But because of the goodness of God, we are still here. It's not because we slick and we smart and, you know, we got our game together. You know, I'm going to, no, it ain't because of that, baby. It's because of the goodness of the Lord and because somebody praying for us. Amen. Somebody got us covered with prayer because it wasn't for the prayers of the saints. Amen. The world been gone to hell in a handbasket. But, but listen, but listen, what I'm trying to get over tonight is, amen, pray God, if, you, we, we, if, if, if we're not careful here tonight, we're not watchful here tonight, amen, pray the enemy can lay stuff for us, and we don't even know that it's going on now because, amen, we're not at ourselves, we're not thinking right. And, 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 and I say again, for the goodness of God, for, if it for the goodness of God, amen, a whole lot of old folk will be destroyed now, but God is just holding, amen, pray God, his, the, the devil back and holding his grace over our head. But God is saying, amen, in this last and evil days, he He's telling the whole world, y'all got to come to yourself now because I can't hold this thing back forever. Amen. You got to snap out of this now and realize, amen, the thing that you need to do and understand, pick up who I am and what I am. It's time for all of us now to come to ourselves. Help me, Holy Ghost. All right, give, give us some time here tonight. Amen. Look at this. Look at this young man. This young man, everybody, what at himself? Had a good place to stay and brothers and all that kind of thing. And here he is, the scripture said, went out into a far country. Went out into a place where he didn't know nobody and didn't nobody know him. He didn't intend to go out there and try it, try everything from A to Z. He was going to break every rule that his mom, daddy had taught him. He going to do everything that daddy said don't do. He going to have himself a good time. And he went out there, went out there. And, and the Bible said, and with, his, with the money that he had in his inheritance, he went out there and lived a riotous life. I mean, that boy lived it up. I mean, that boy had himself a time. I mean, whatever, amen, he thought to do, he did that. Whatever he was big enough to do, he did that. Man, that boy bebopped, he popped up. He had a good time out there. Amen, but no doubt he got him a little, you know, got him a little drinking. He started drinking a little bit, you know, and maybe going to the clubs, you know. And when you got money and go to the club, you know, he's setting up the house. And, and because he was setting up the house, and folk were flocking to him because, see, folk flock to you when you spend money on them. 
Uh, everybody in town your friend when you got money. Uh, that's why I, saw, I heard some of them folk testify that won the lottery. Said, man, I, I knew that I never won this money because hey, when I got won this money out this lottery, I had cousins and, and third cousins and fifth cousins uh, and then calling me and they're telling me I'm your cutting this and cutting that. And what would that poor man, the depth the man said, I'm, I'm getting rid of all of it because I ain't had a peace of mind since I had this money in my possession. He had folks all around him and he was doing his thing. No doubt he, you know, no doubt he had a few little old girls, you know, amen, hanging on his arm, you know, because see, now he thought he was a Mac Daddy. He wanted to be a Mac Daddy, you see. Uh, he, he, the, the boys in the world was teasing him because, uh, you know, he was a good boy, you know, good boy, you know, you didn't go out and you didn't carouse and run the streets and all that kind of stuff. But he said, well, since I'm out here now, I'm going to show the folks I'm a Mac Daddy and, and got him a couple of girls, you know, maybe he had a girl for every night in the week and he was potting there. I had him a redhead one night, a, a brunette the next night, had a blonde the next night and, and, I, and, and Lord have mercy, I had a spike the next night and, and had a rainbow color the next night y'all bald head the next he, he had oh every night he was just he was having a time, now he was mac dad ooh, look at old prodigal son he's a party animal Oh, old prodigal, he G money, man. He got his thing together. Boy, he the cool dude. Look at him, man. He got this thing going. And you know, folk will, folk will fill your head. Folk will blow your head up and make you think you're more than what you are. Hey, man, he wasn't no Mac Daddy. He's an old sideways country boy that was out there and out of his element. And the world saw him coming because, hey, man, when he was coming out there in the world, he was walking sideways. Had the country walk. They knew it was country. Y'all ain't him and now. See, folk know you. You can get out there and try to act, but folk know you. Oh, y'all, he's a timid guy. Yeah, look, look, at, look at him now. And, and see, when he was doing all this stuff, he went at himself. He, he, he was a little touched in the head. You know, he wasn't quite, uh, yeah, he was a little touched in the head. He, he, you know, he thought he was doing, a, he, he went at himself. And he hadn't been taught to live that kind of life. And there he was, part and hearted. But one day, the Bible said, uh, amen, this young man lost, uh, spent all his money, amen, Peggy, found himself in a far country, amen, Peggy, with, with no friend because, see, when your money gone, your friend's gone. When your money gone, the girl's just gone. And he found himself by himself out there hungry and the only job he could find was a job feeding swines amen Jews didn't have nothing to do with hogs it was a disgrace and a shame for a Jew to have any kind of association with old split hook hog can I get a witness here but there he was out there amen down there in a place of shame in a place of degradation he was nasty he was smelly oh he was hungry Shoes had ran over, clothes had got raggedy, and down there in the in 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 hog pen, getting ready to feed them hogs, and that slop looked so good to that boy. He was so hungry to the slop, looked good to him. See, when you're hungry, they tell me you eat almost anything. When you're hungry, you almost eat anything. See, when you're hungry, you ain't trusting. You ain't got to have filet mignon when you're hungry. Uh, y'all hear me? Goose liver do. Uh, y'all hear me now? You ain't got to have steak when you're hungry. Bologna would do. Uh, y'all hear me now? When you're hungry, anything. They put in your mouth will satisfy you. Because you're hungry. And this boy was so hungry. And the Bible says he fanged with a filled his belly with the husk that he fed the swine. He started to Hello, Pokey. Get over, Pokey. Get over, Suey. And let me have a little bit of that supper. Y'all got in that trough. Let me have some of that slop. And when you're hungry and away from God, you'll eat slop. Y'all got to hear me. When you're hungry and away from God, I say you'll eat slop. And what is slop, Bishop? Dope, crack, heroin, wine. Y'all got to hear me now. That ain't number slop. Look what your neighbor said. Neighbor, don't be a hog. Don't eat the devil slop. Put that wine away. Are y'all hear me now? But there he was in the position like that. Amen. Low down. Are y'all hear me now? But down in the hog pen, something happened down there. And I found this out. Sometime God got to let us hit bottom. Sometimes God got to let us hit bottom with our crazy self. 
because we're up walking on top we ain't got no sin we don't see nothing now. but look like look like when you hit bottom then then then, 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 you, then you come back to yourself and sometimes God got to let you go to jail y'all got to hear me lose your house lose your job and all other kind of stuff. But when that young man came and found himself in that hall pen, then the Bible said he came to himself. Can I get a witness here? He said, all of a sudden his mind came back to him. And nobody asked himself, what in the world am I doing out here? I wasn't raised like this. This wasn't what I was taught and how I was taught. What am I doing here with these hogs? I ain't never had nothing to do with these hogs. What am I doing down here now my God he came to himself can I get a witness and when he came to himself that's when his life began to change I don't know who I'm talking to tonight but God sent on the word and say it's time to come to yourself cause somebody tonight need a change in your life cause the way your life is going now you're headed to the hog pen or maybe you're already there but God said, listen, I'm not through with you tonight. If you want to change, I'll bring a change to your life. So come to yourself. Snap out of it. Oh, help me somebody. Just snap out of it. And come on back. And bring your mind back. And think like you ought to think. Can I get a witness here? Because time is running out. And if you ever decided you're going to be saved, the time is now. But love, we don't have much time. Time is running out. How you know that, Bishop? Because the waves are rowing. There's earthquakes in different places. Wars and rumors of wars. Oh, Lord. These are signs that Jesus is on his way back. Touch somebody and said, neighbor, we don't have much time. There was a time to come to ourselves. That time is now while the grace of God is extended and God got his hand saying whosoever will let him come it's time to act are y'all hear me now yeah when this young man came to himself he realized he had fallen into the devil's trap he realized the enemy done tricked me and ain't nothing wrong with being tricked just don't stay tricked you know, sometimes we get tricked by the devil, but don't stay tricked. Sometimes we make a bad choice and bad decision, but don't wallow in it. Y'all got to hear me. Sometimes it's hit aside the head, but that's all right. Don't lay down and die. Oh, Lord. But tell somebody, get up and try it again. Say yes. Because what I love about God the most is God is a forgiving God. Can I get a witness? He's rich in mercy. Oh, y'all him in the day. Oh Lord the young man when he came back to his senses he said I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm getting up at this hog pen. I'm going to rise. I'm going to get up from here. I'm going to take my life to another level. I'm not going to be a hog pen dweller but I'm going to get up out of here because I believe there's something better for me and I stopped by Marshall tonight to tell somebody there's some better things in store for your life. Get up at the hall pen. Come to yourself. You better than that. You better than being a drug addict. You better than being a wine head. You better than being a hoochie mama and a chicken head. God made you fearfully and he made you wonderfully and God got a life he want to give you. Say yeah and don't let the devil cheat you out of your life. Get up. I said get up out of your situation get up off the stool of complacency and come back to God and come to God and let God have his way in your life can I get a witness here I said can I get a witness here tell somebody neighbor snap out of it Now about it. This is a time. Sit out of me finish this message. This is a time now where the devil is mesmerizing folks. 
and hypnotizing people. Y'all know y'all, y'all, I know y'all familiar with the term mesmerize and hypnotize. It means that when they hypnotize you, they kind of put you in a trance. And uh, even though you're there, you're not aware of what's going on around you. <laughs> I've seen some hypnotists, amen, hypnotize folks and tell them, say, uh, when I snap my finger or uh, when I say uh, the word, uh, you're going to be a chicken. Mm. He said, chicken. Go to acting like a chicken. And they acting like that because they hypnotize. Even though they're a human being, they acting like a chicken. Y'all got to hear me. Y'all was quiet, so I said, I might as well preach this one. That's what was on my heart anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then all of a sudden in the routine, the, the hypnotist said, now when I snap my finger, you're going to come out of this. He said, woo! And push it to them. Look at them now. Everybody said, ooh, ooh, ooh. what they laughing at? You was acting like a chicken. Was? I didn't know it. He didn't know it because he was mesmerized and hypnotized. And the devil now messed around hypnotizing folks and got them acting like. But it's time to, God is trying to do this. God is doing this. All over the world, God's saying. Have you seen people daydreaming, daydreaming? They're just sitting there. They're there. Sitting about it. But their mind and stuff is, hey, so do you be talking to them on here? They say, hey, oh, oh, what, what? And see, this is the kind of thing the devil got going on now with folk. He got folk body. Their body is here, but their mind and stuff is somewhere else. Yeah? Yeah, because he done mesmerized them. And he's using a lot of things now. A lot of things to mesmerize folks. Are y'all hearing me now? Yeah. He's using the tip of everything in this life to keep people away from salvation. Away from eternal life. The devil not got folks living in a fantasy. Give me, give me, give me 10 minutes. We done got out of reality now. Now we living in fantasy. Can I just talk? We living in a fantasy world like, 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 like we living in. But life is real, y'all. This is not Alice in Wonderland. This is not Pandora and Avatar. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't think I know nothing about that. Do this is real. This is not television. This is real. Television is make believe. Oh, God. And folk not trying to live their lives like people they see on television are in a movie. Why are they in a fantasy world? They say that art is supposed to imitate life. But now life trying to imitate art and got us screwed up. Hmm? Let me tell you something, fella. You ain't no Shaft and no Mac Daddy. You human. And I know even Shaft and Mac Daddy be shooting that Shaft. He be ducking it. And you get out there trying to act like Shaft and you wind up in the morgue. Somebody shoot you dead. Or they think they're a hustler. Man, a hustle, man. A hustle, man. Big roll of money in your pocket. Hustle, hustle. Like you seen on uh, 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 Boys in the Hood and, and, and things like that. It's yeah, super fly. See, it's back in my day. I don't know what they're doing now. But super fly, man. You know, when super fly came out years ago, all the young boys got one of them big hats and laid it to the side. Now, we were, we, we were, we were super fly, man. Superfly was a fictional character that was only created for the movies. But they trying to live their life like fantasy. And I laugh sometimes if I'm looking at a picture, especially shooting, you see but 
Bible just run all the sound. Machine gun. They just miss out. Good, the guy, he just missing. He just, he just ducking it. And you shoot with a machine gun? If you can't shoot nobody with a machine gun, you need to put that thing down and get you a, a pop pistol or something. Man, I can shoot some folk with a machine gun. I, I just tell them, oh, kill all of y'all. But they just, and see, you get out there the same way. Like you indestructible. <laughs> Y'all ain't hear me. Yeah. Folk living in a fantasy world. Old folk living like they're young. Old folk living like they're young folk. Getting these face lips, lips, getting their lips pumped. Now, y'all ain't gonna lie, I'm going home tonight anyway. And all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, Tommy Tucks, and this pulled up and this brought down and all that kind of stuff. And when she come out of there, she's 60 years old, you see. Come out of there, you know, think it's looking like she's 30, but on the inside, she's still 60. And she want to get out there and pop like a young girl. <laughs> Y'all ain't hear me. <laughs> I saw a tip of one of these, these weddings. They had these weddings, you know, how they had these weddings. They had a reception, though. Old lady, I guess she might have had a little bit too much to drink. Here she was on trying to get on top of the table and, and dance on the table and tip the whole table over. I said, girl, you too young. Stay off that table. That table telling her, you too old, girl. Get off me. <laughs> Your table dancing days is over. Yeah. And got these old ladies now running these young boys. They ain't. I mean, I'm a cougar. You ain't no cougar. <laughs> Ooh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> you ain't no cougar. You an old gray man. <laughs> that thank you, a cougar. Get up. Oh, God, I ain't gonna get off in all that. Even these old men still think they back that and stuff. You know what I mean? Get that just for me in and, and, and throw it in their head and all like that. And get out there and try to, trying to pop and talk to them young girls and all that. Talking about, baby, don't mind the snow in the cellar. Caught the fire still in the roof. And, 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 and there's no more snow in the roof. Caught the fire still in the cellar. <laughs> you old fool, you better get somewhere and sit down before you break something. And before you strain something and pulls. I'm getting ugly tonight. <laughs> but folk need to snap out of it. Gotta come back to ourselves. If you're old, you're old. Gotta go, my but go act like you're old and quit acting like you're young. Can I get a witness here? That devil will kill you. Are y'all hear me tonight? Who right there and blow a gasket? Talking about them. Who right there have an aneurysm, Doctor Clay? Bust your head open. Fantasy, fantasy. The devil done got him hypnotized. Then you got church folks hypnotized. Think they can lead the church and make it in the world. Snap out of it. You ain't gonna cut it out there. You ain't gonna cut it. It ain't gonna work for you cause you know better. Uh-oh, you know better. To him that was uh, given much, much is given, much is required. It ain't gonna work for you like it for the motherfucker that been out there all their life. Oh, uh, your better hope, your better chance over in God. But it's so many tiny, I know it's tried and tribulation in serving God, but it's tried and tribulation in the world. But the thing about over here in God, you got some help on your side. God will be your help during your time of trial and tribulation, and God will bless you and shield you from a whole lot of stuff going on out there. You ain't never got to experience some things. But he's mesmerized, hypnotizing folks. And God is popping his finger saying, come on back, come on back to reality here. And it's all said and done, all of us need to serve God. Can I get a witness here? Now, I'm going to get all off my message here tonight. Are y'all hearing me now? Yeah, yeah. And I got to say something to the church before I leave tonight. The devil trying to hypnotize the church, the saints. Trying to get us to focus on our trial and tribulation and forget about the promises of God. Well, don't let what you're going through capture your mind. 
The Bible says if you live for God, you're going to have some kind of persecution. You're going to go through some things like that. But you got to keep your mind on the Lord and on the Lord's promises. He told me and, and you too in his word, I ain't going to let none come upon you can't deal with. If it happens to you, God, I'm going to give you the ability to bear it. And then turn around and make a way for you to come out of that thing. No weapon formed against you, he says, shall prosper. I'm not going to let it work, God said. So the only thing a tribes come to do for a, people, for a child of God is to make him better, make him stronger. And to take him on to his divine destiny, his divine purpose over here in God. I think I told y'all last night, we going somewhere. And tribes is one of the vehicles that's getting us there. And so when trials start going on in your life, don't sink down into a, oh, I ain't going to use that word. But don't sink down, you know, into a melancholy state of mind. But raise your hand and give God praise for having the opportunity to go through for Jesus. Because, Lord, I know if I go through this, some good is going to come out of it for me. I know some good coming out of this thing. And I'm going to wait till my blessing come. Oh, y'all hear me now? Yeah. He'll try to charm you. The devil try to charm you with stuff and things to pull us away from the word and from the way of God. And one of the things he uses now uh, 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 with the church folk is prosperity. The natural things of life. And they're all right. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But Jesus says, seek first. The kingdom of God and what? All of his righteousness. And he said, these things will be added to you. If you're going to seek your things, seek the more of God. I want to get closer to Jesus. Lord, increase my prayer life my consecration and my concentration. Help me to keep my mind stayed on you. If you do that and stay close to God, everything else. He's throwing the riches and things of the world at our young folk. But young folk, money ain't everything. Uh-oh. Money not everything. It helps you buy some stuff you want in life. But there's some folk got money and can't even spend it because they're too sick to even spend it. But he's throwing those things. Them devil, them spirits, bombarding us. The Bible tells us in 1 John, I'm finna close. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Because the devil is talking. I said, the devil is talking. Was it, was it Sunday night I told my church? The devil is a liar. Yeah. We can't ignore that nor forget that. If the devil talking to you, he's a liar. He ain't telling the truth. That devil told me, well, if he told you, he lied. He lied. So don't believe every spirit, but try the spirit to see where they come from God or not. Mm -mm. Then he went on to say, because great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Oh, y'all hear me tonight. This young man's life took a turn for the better when he came to himself. And that is my prayer. Lord, keep my mind straight. Keep me thinking like I ought to be thinking. Because the world around me is crazy. And I'm going to say that I got to close. You know, folk now is crazy. Around you crazy. And they think you crazy. They saying you crazy for serving God. And you crazy for going to church. And you crazy. But it ain't us crazy. They crazy. Like that woman going down the one way street the wrong way deep. Somebody holler, lady, you're going the wrong way. She said, no, I'm not there. All them cars coming her way. She said, they was going the wrong way. But she wasn't. Oh, y'all listen to me now. God is snapping his fingers. Earthquakes, floods, these are God. This is God saying, wake up, folks. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Something to happen here. I'm trying to get your attention. Come to yourself. If you're not saved, now is the time. Don't play the waiting game. Because nobody is promised tomorrow. Hmm? And if you are saved, stay with God. Ooh, Lord, this ain't no time. Lord, this ain't no time. Excuse my abundance, but this ain't no time to be leaving God and checking out what's in the world. It's time now to hold on to God as tight as you can to your blood. Right, right, here, I'm so tight to the blood. Just time to hold on to God with all you got now. Because he's soon to come.
Can I get a witness here? Come on, stand everybody. I'm going to stop right there. He came to himself, rose up and did something about his situation. And I love the ending of the story because on his way back home to his father, and, and he said, I'm going to repent when I get back there. I'm going to ask my father to forgive me because I wronged him. And I'm not going to ask him just to make me a son, but I'm going to ask him just to let me be one of the high servants. I'll sell for just being a high. Now, that, that's a repentant heart. God looking for a contrite heart. Oh, Lord. But on the way home, his daddy saw him coming down the road. A far off and recognized it. That's my son. And he didn't wait till the boy get to the house. He ran and met him. Grabbed him and hugged him and fell on, fell on his neck. And the son began to say what he had rehearsed. Father, I'm sorry. I forgive me. I sin against you and against heaven. Make me one of your high servants. He said, what you talking about, boy? You my son. I'm going to make you no servant. You my blood. You come on home. You, I'm going to store on you the sonship. Got back to the house and killed a fatty calf and had a, a feast for his son because he said now he was lost, he's found, he was dead, but now he's dead. That's where God is. He, if, I, if, you, if we could see him in the spirit, he's standing over this world with his outstretched arms saying, come on, y'all. I'm ready to restore you back to sonship. Don't worry about all the stuff you done did. Just come on back home. Come on to me. Heads bowed, eyes closed, hearts and minds on the Lord. Anybody tonight that need to come to God, that need to come to God, step from where you're standing. Don't be bashful. Don't be ashamed. This is your heritage as well as your privilege to come to God because you don't belong to the devil. You don't belong to the devil. You belong to God. You're his property. And he wants you back.